Yeah, maybe Sven, you can introduce the case. Or? Yeah, sure. Uh, good afternoon. This is a 63-year-old gentleman with the CTO of the right SFA. Uh, he come, he presents with severe claudication on the right side, uh, 180 meters maximum walking capacity. ABI is 0.61. Is some risk factors and also already coronary intervention. Next slide, please. Is, this is the angiography. Uh, you can see proximal portion of the SFA on the right side, still patent but severely diseased, then occlusion, quite calcified occlusion, and elsewhere there was already uh, an attempt uh, done to recanalize this occlusion also with the retrograde puncture here of the distal SFA indicated here by the red arrows, uh, by the black arrows. However, this attempt was not successful and now yeah, we hope we can recanalize this occlusion here. This patient is really symptomatic and he really requires treatment. Next slide, this is our strategy. We come from the left side, crossover approach as usual for actually for our SFA uh, treatments. Yeah, we want to, to cross the occlusion, if necessary also from a retrograde puncture, either via the distal SFA, if necessary, we are also prepared to do a puncture here of the high anterior tibial artery, if necessary, followed uh, then by PTA and probably stenting, in this case with calcification, probably uh, the supera stent uh, will be necessary. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much, Sven. And um, let's switch to the screen. So, as Sven said, we went crossover with the seven French sheath uh, to this occlusion. Now you can see that the proximal channel is also actually occluded. And uh, further down here you can see the distal SFA. I'll show you in a minute the calcification. Uh, further down there is uh, actually all three arteries open. Sorry, going down to the foot. Yeah, let me show you once again here the calcification. Uh, it is really, and we have uh, taken uh, this. So we went already down with, uh, with the wire. And uh, we also, I mean, were stuck here, um, where they couldn't uh, re-enter also in the other hospital, really calcified. So seeing this, I think this is uh, for us a clear-cut case for a superastent. Uh, potentially, I mean, if we um, thoroughly predilate this lesion here with uh, probably would take a six millimeter balloon to prepare for a 5.5 uh, superior stent, we may have even ruptures. So, therefore, we have seven French sheaths across uh, some wire bands here to take them in if, if necessary. But first, we have to cross and um, we also, I mean, as has been attempted already, would puncture here the distal SFA. Although I must say uh, the patient's leg is relatively strong and uh, in these cases it can be a little bit difficult to reach down with a needle here to that area. So in these cases potentially a puncture of the proximal anterior tibial artery would be easier. Uh, and indeed, it may be easier. So we had a little bit of problem here also with local anesthesia. Patient is relatively sensitive here in that area, proximal to the knee on the medial side. So therefore, I took that, as you can see here, this 9 centimeter, 21 gauge needle already with um, um, stepwise uh, ad admission of, of, of local, uh, local anesthesia down to the artery. I left it here. I don't want to pull it out again to find, once again, the root down may be a little bit sensitive here. Yeah, so, but what I also did already, and we anticipate that if once we sorry, just a moment, um, balloon this region, we may also have some more pain, uh, so ballooning pain in that calcium. So therefore, in these cases, we take another, once again, needle down to that plug and give local anesthesia there. So this needle is not for gaining excess there, but to really give 1% uh, local anesthesia down to the plug. And uh, you can see here that we try to reach down, move the needle a little bit, see that uh, feel the calcium, see the calcium move, and that's then the place where we administer some local anesthesia. 
Well, usually we do the whole length of the SFA if it's calcified. That requires maybe two, three penetrations of the skin. In this case, we only did that distal area because he's relatively sensitive at his skin here. Yeah, that's where we are. Um, and I give once again a little bit of local anesthesia through, through the needle here, and we are ready to puncture here distal. Then, then go ahead, uh, Andre. Fine. So once again, so the needle, uh, what is very important, I think, for retrograde puncture is that the needle is really on top of the calcium. So you have to find the right angulation of the C-arm, which is here. 55 degree left oblique, relatively much because his leg is relatively stiff. I asked him to do a little bit frog leg, but not so easy for him. Usually I do something like 30, 35 oblique, but in that, that case the needle, I would have to penetrate the needle relatively uh, anterior through the skin, making the path from the skin to, this, to the artery longer. So it's, yeah, actually it's here, it's now 45. 45 degree. Yeah, I would just quickly once go right oblique to see how close the needle is. Really, the needle tip to the calcium. You can see here I'm really in front of the calcium, and that was, I think, the reason why it failed in the other hospital. Uh, they choose the relatively uh, yeah, steep way uh, path to the artery, and then they didn't really have push to go through the calcium. So I think um, you have to go more shallow, which is, of course, sometimes difficult, especially in uh, rel relatively strong legs. So we try this just once again, as has been tried already, and calcium really leads us here. Uh, nevertheless, I think we'll give a little injection. Guckst du dann noch? Ich guck auf den Arm. Andre, can you use? Can you use? Aha. Okay, the amplification is okay. Uh, yeah, calcium is really strong here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it jumped away from the calcium. It's very calcified. I tried to twist the knee a little bit inside. Ay, 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 ay. Look at this here. But uh, you are just uh, trying uh, to reach the <sighs> calcium. Why you don't puncture two centimeters lower? Yeah, you're right now. And well, no, if I look puncture lower, I have a steeper angle into the artery. So potentially I try to puncture the uh, proximal to that, to that um, calcium a little bit. Hopefully the needle is long enough. Uh, here's even more calcium. Andre, this is a nine centimeter length needle. <laughs> nine centimeter length. Yeah, it's nine centimeter. I also have here a 15 centimeter long one, uh, which yeah could be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> it's so calcified, it's incredible. Yeah, potentially I have to puncture. No, huh? Maybe uh, it's blocked now. I think I'm somewhere in an artery. Okay. Uh, there's not a little bit of a flow going up. Oh. <laughs> Let's see whether a wire goes in. Maybe V18. Uh, well, that, of course, uh, could also be difficult to take here any device in. Uh, okay, yeah, let's try. And you are using our eating guide, right, okay? Yeah, it's an O18 guide. Well, oh, this is obviously a collateral. It's a, good yeah, huh? it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Okay, why not land? Uh, yeah. Why not land the wire here in the collateral? And now try try to take um, a catheter in. Well, mm -hmm. this will be difficult to to push a sheath in or something. Which I want to do is before I continue, is that I take the needle as you hopefully can see on the needle tip. I try to 
rotate the needle in the arterial wall to enlarge that hole here. Jeez. Okay, and a quick cross. Huh? Okay. Uh, you are introducing now a micro catheter or what? This is now a support catheter. It's here, the Quick Cross 018 platform. And hopefully it gives us enough support to go through the calcium. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. So that's not so bad. And now we have to find the right way upwards. Maybe this wire is destroyed or uh, a an, an command. Command. Yeah, let 18, me 18. try to take this little higher. Yeah, what we have not done yet is to balloon from proximal. I think this will facilitate wire passage if we predilate here. So this here is a four by 120 balloon. Fragen Sie, ob er was spürt. Okay, no pain, maybe because of our local anesthesia. Yeah, and now I try, uh -huh. so here the real plug starts. Oh, maybe, okay, so, ah, okay. I think I'm now in the same channel as the one which we have predilated. Yeah, yeah but this was too easy. Um, <laughs> It was too easy, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, I, I was expecting something different, clearly, with, with this calcium. <laughs> you was describing everything difficult, but it was very easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, very easy case, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I predilate everything up to the femoral bifurcation. Then we take a jet Judkins five French down to snare the wire. Hast du ein Judkin? Yeah. And yeah. So sorry, acoustics are very bad. I can hardly hear. Anything. Yeah, well, it was really calcified, so we were prepared actually to take a four French sheath in distal, uh, which um, is sometimes necessary. But here we had luck. So, so what do you think? Uh, you Maybe don't we intend to use a four French sheath now? No, now I don't need this four French sheath anymore. Uh, or, uh, yeah, I haven't unpacked it. Oh. So, Andre, once, once you snare your wire, uh, when will you get the uh, quick cross out of the distal SFA? Now and hold pressure, or do you wait till the end of the case? Well, um, yeah, that's a good question. So sometimes, in fact, so usually we, we directly take it out uh, once we don't need it anymore or once we have snared the wire. But in some cases, it's helpful maybe to have a pull-through wire to be able to bring your devices down, like balloons, superostents. In fact, I like it very much to, yeah, to, to implant uh, superostents with the wire sticking out distally because you can pull on the, the, uh, the distal end of the wire, um, uh, creating quite a lot of tension on, on, on your uh, superostent system uh, that makes uh, packing that, that stent much easier. So in some cases, really helpful to have a pull-through wire through, through the whole intervention. But here in this case, and especially if you puncture distal SFA, um, there's not really so much space distal to the SFA occlusion to uh, use that pull-through uh, wire. So usually we take we leave pull-through wires when we puncture proximal anterior, but not distal SFA. Uh, Schiebstuhl, right? 
Pacific okay. 520. So, Andre and Sven, we had the Andre and Sven clock on. You were 2.2 nanoseconds slower that one than the last time you did that on the last case. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Okay. So, Andrea, I think uh, you have now to prepare the vessel for the sand implantation. Yeah. In the meantime, we can uh, have uh, now the presentation uh, of Lawrence. Uh, how sure. do of I course, choose yes. my the improvements and uh, probably the also the final result? Andre? Uh, not yet the final result, yes, uh, but I can show you the steps which we have done. Just a moment, sorry, Marcos. Um, so, sorry. Yeah, okay, so, so we had the wire through and then we pulled down our balloon. And for hemostasis, actually, what we are, oh, sorry, what we usually do is that we yeah, pull, the, pull the balloon uh, down like this here, and you can see four markers, three from the quick cross, and then, then one marker from the balloon. And we actually pull the balloon out of the artery. And that is, of course, hemostasis when we then take the wire out. And then we redirect the wire. We take uh, um, the floppy tip down. Actually, it's not, yeah. Uh, uh, we take the floppy tip down, and then we pull back the balloon from that hole from the artery into the artery and then take the wire down here to the SFA. In this case, we punctured from retrograde into a diseased area, so for, not for hemostasis, but for treat, to treat that area, we ballooned across that area, which of course additionally gives us hemostasis there. And so this is a five millimeter, 520, and where we did local anesthesia here, he had absolutely no pain, but more proximal, where it's not so calcified, that balloon already was quite painful. And uh, then we continued, so this is the result after that. So for us, it's very clear this needs stents over the whole length. And distal at that calcium, we plan to take a superior stent in, proximal without calcium, potentially a drug eluting stent. Uh, we continued now with a um, ultra score um, scoring balloon, the new one, uh, with two wires outside. Uh, so this is a 600, and we are prepared now to take a 5.5 uh, superior stand in. Yeah. So the disease was also extending distal, but we plan to take a drug coat balloon yeah. distal and just cover the calcium here with yeah. uh, with a superior stand. Yeah, yeah. Oder noch ein bisschen tiefer? So, oder? Ja. So ist ausnehmen. Warte. Uh, Andre is uh, yeah. uh, five millimeter diameter, the superior stent. Yeah, so for us, five millimeter inner, and uh, for US, it's 5.5, .5, so outer diameter, 5.5. So therefore, in calcium, we clearly uh, predilate uh, with six millimeter balloons uh, to, yeah, because of the, the recoil we frequently have. And here's already one area which is potentially not so easy to see what, uh, or pack. So Sven is implanting the stent here. And where it becomes calcific, he's slowing down, as you can see. Yeah, but uh, it's not very difficult now to implant the stent. I think the crucial part for the Supera is really a good vessel preparation before implantation of the stand, so I hardly ever push the system here, so I rather pull it out not in order not to pack it to, to dance. Uh, this is because of a good predilatation. And this was possible because we had a local anesthesia in this area, so the six millimeter predilatation was well tolerated by the patient. Uh, Sven, uh, do you are, do you are taking care with different uh, packages uh, of uh, uh, of the stent, uh, or you try to have an homogeneous delivery of the stent? Yeah, yeah I, I, I try to to have uh, yeah, an appropriate delivery of the stent here, so not to pack to dance, especially also not to elongate the stand because then it loses all its uh, features. 
So nevertheless, here is it a little bit more difficult. So this is an area of extensive calcification. Uh, so I take my time. It's important to do it slowly, I think. Yeah, we, in this calcium area, we could have taken a short balloon for preparation, 620. Um, might have even made it easier now to implant uh, the stent. Andre, for the audience, so I, why it is so important uh, to be so slow for the uh, during the delivery? Well, you can. I mean, in this calcium, um, so if it would not be calcified. Um, you probably just take your left hand, you push the stand out, and it automatically goes into the right morphology tags um, uh, correctly. But here in this calcium, uh, you tend to, with your, the right hand is actually which grabs here the, um, the outer shaft of the, of, of the stand is the much more important hand which um, pushes the stand when it tends to elongate or pulls the stand when it tends to pack too densely. And this uh, difference between packing too much or, um, or having the stent deployed in an elongated way is very delicate. And uh, therefore, you have to take your time to really uh, have best control on, on that uh, delivery with your right hand. And what is the total length of this stent? So this is 150. But I assume with this packing in calcium, we tend to pack it a little denser maybe than necessary. Uh, so therefore, it will probably be a little shorter, like maybe 140, 130, 120 uh, millimeter at the end. For the audience not familiar with the Sapera stand, this is a beautiful, beautiful demonstration. It takes a little bit longer, but if you notice every stent tying along the way, that's beautiful apposition in that heavy calcium. And it really does take a slow deployment to get that kind of art form uh, when you're in heavy calcium. And even though it takes a little longer than any other stent, there's no nitinol stent that will look like that stent right now does in calcium. So just beautiful technique by Sven. Fine. Okay. Pacific yeah, that's, that's true. Cuts. Only this this stand can handle the calcium. It will not collapse. It will not kink. It will always stay round and cannot be compressed here by the calcium. Fine, so, yeah. So more proximal, it's not so calcified. Our plan is now maybe to take in a uh, drug looting stand in there. But we will give you already an image here of that area. Yeah, this will be great then, yeah. because practically the case is concluded. Yeah. Ah, that, yeah. I think, looks very good. Okay, the result is perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andre, for this uh, great, great uh, demonstration, uh, and uh, also to Sven. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.